Thanks for tuning back in. I want to talk about if you do want to go through getting one of these VFDs, um, they you have to make sure, like I said, get the right model unit. And if we look at the manual here, we can see there's a huge number of different models. Some are single phase 110, uh, single phase 220, three phase 380, that type of stuff. So I already talked about that you have to find the right model. This is the single phase main component. So we have uh, the right terminals, W, V, and U. That's our motor connection. And line and neutral is our inputs. That's really all that I have connected in at this point. I'm using the front panel controls. Uh, this whole front panel is can be removed and extended uh, using a, a ribbon cable. There are some other features in here about different types of controls. You can set up some external switches, such as a certain start, uh, low speed, medium, high speed, that type of thing. Uh, you can do an external potentiometer, but those are more features for a much later topic. So I'm just using the only features are the front panel. So literally it's just this part and the uh, AC and in input. I haven't changed anything else regarding that. Our control panel has details of which each of the switches do. Now, to be able to basically do this, again, I'm using a 17... Uh, 1750 RPM uh, grinder or motor. So it is typically a two pole motor that is designed with its capacitor and its coils to run at 1750 Hertz at 60 Hertz. So I have to tell the VFD how this, it, how these controls are. So we have to look at saying which parameters uh, will set that up. So in order to do that, I need to turn around and get to, I hit the set button and all of a sudden F01. If I hit the uh, the set again, it now tells me the value. So I'm at zero at keyboard. If I hit set, I can do up and down to change it. And then set will turn around and store it and I move on. So that's how the all these values are doing, are programmed. Uh, if I need to, move the control left that's this guy here that's moving left uh, but i'm not going to talk about that you can see that through the manual itself so let's get into the parameters how did i set this vfd to run this motor um, the main thing that i end up doing is saying okay my main frequency f03 is 60 hertz so i want to make sure that i'm set for 60 hertz there my reference frequency that is coming in is 60 hertz. I also do that at 60 hertz. Uh, my maximum operating frequency, because I'm using the 1750 RPM, I want to be able to run it up to as high as 100 hertz. That'll give me just about 3000 RPM to be able to speed it up. If you're using the 3600 RPM, I think you'd leave that at 60 hertz. Um, the rest of these values, you can see that I'm, I've recorded some of these down like this one is five, I left it at five, it came in as five. Minimum frequency, I'm setting my minimum frequency to 10 hertz. Um, in the video you saw, as I slowed it down to 500 RPM, if I was getting into there and bogging it down, the current would start to increase. So that minimum frequency is what you wanna set as your minimum RPM, where you know that if you're gonna be bogging it down, you don't wanna to get too low. So I set mine up at 10. And that might be a reasonable. If you've got a 3600 RPM, you might have to set that up and accept a little higher RPM as your minimum. Um, but you can test it out um, and look at the ability to cycle through. Like right now, I'm showing RPM. And when this is an A, that's the amperage. So right now, 0, 0.0 amps. Uh, the next value, important one, maximum operating voltage so it's 120 volts because that's my input voltage i want my output voltage to be 120 volts i do not want the output to be anything different than that uh, the intermediate frequency that these values here are all the stock values that were there so i didn't do any other changes there now 
I get into this part here, the stop mode. The VFD has the capability of uh, applying a, uh, a voltage opposite or switching it, it around like as if it's forward and switching the phases around to, to deaccelerate the motor faster to a stop. Uh, so if I'm using a ramp mode, that's what it's going to do. It's going to apply power and slow the motor down faster to a stop than what I used to do with the switch and just turn it off and it would coast. If you want to do coast mode, just like the flipping of the switch on the unit, you set that to coast. But I'm using the ramp mode, so I'm leaving it as zero. Now, in zero in ramp mode, there are two diff distinctions here. You have active um, deacceleration where power is applied, and then there's something called DC braking. DC braking would have to use something like this, where it's a resistor connected in, and the um, the energy is being dumped into the resistor at a certain point. Now, if you're not going to use DC braking with that external resistor, you have to have a couple of parameters set correctly, and you don't want to play with those unless you have that resistor connected. So to make uh, active braking work, I need to set my zero for my ramp. My stop frequency has to be above zero. Uh, if I set this uh, greater than zero, then I'm going to actually be doing uh, DC braking. So 0 0.5 works. So that means I'm going to be actively braking all the way down to 0.5 hertz. 1 hertz might be even a good enough value. You can play with that one. Just don't make it 0, 0.0. Um, and it'll just mean that it'll do active braking until it comes to a higher speed. The other important one is stop braking time. This has to be 0, 0.0. If you use any value greater than this, now you're engaging DC braking. Now you need to have the resistor applied. Otherwise, you're going to smoke the components. So you have to have this set at 0, 0.0 if you do not have the resistor. If this is 0, 0.0, the next couple of values become a don't care. So the DC braking level is a don't care because I am turned around and uh, I'm not using DC braking. Also, F39 is what hertz does DC braking kick in? Again, it's a don't care, so I leave it at 4.0 because of this, this 0, 0.0. If you change this and you do want the resistor, now you can play with this value, this value, and F28 has to be 0, 0.0. Uh, the other values are pretty much all standard stock values here. Um, when we get into some of the modes, all of these guys are stock values. Get into, can play with some of the acceleration and, and uh, protection modes. I still haven't uh, worked with these. I've just recorded what, they, what the values were. Um, so I have to look at optimizing some of that to make sure that the unit shuts down for my motor. Now, this is the important part is I want to tell the unit what my motor ratings are. So I didn't bother changing the rated power because I don't see a rated power. What I want to make sure is my rated voltage is 120 volts and my rated current is 3 amps. So it'll automatically cal calculate the other one if, if you enter in uh, these two. So like if I did wattage and voltage, it would calculate the right, um, the right amperage. And we are a two pole motor. So with a two pole um, split capacitor motor, if you were 3,600 RPM, you would be at 36, you would be 3,600 RPM. Now we have to calibrate the, um, the RPM and we'll get into that in the display mode because normally when you first get it, you will, you will not see the, um, the RPM. And I'll show you how to turn that on. A uh, couple of other things. These are just the values as they came. I haven't played around with these yet. Mac, uh, motor slip compensation, motor slip compensation filtering, um, AVR function. I haven't read up on those. I've just 
recorded what they were in the unit as it came. PID functions, we can leave those as they are because it seems to be working just fine. And again, these are my values that they came as, uh, as the unit came and delivered to me. Now this is where we have to be able to make the change so we can see the RPM. So the selection of extension display one, um, it was not showing me operational speed. So I had to turn around, it was originally for bus voltage, but that's not right. So I changed it to operational speed. So I changed this to two and now I got RPM displayed and I had to come down to here at 184 if you're using 3600 RPM because it's by the number of poles, a two pole motor will output, if it's 1.0, 3600 RPM. Because mine's 1750, I had to change this down to 0 0.5 to get the correct RPM being displayed for the frequency. And that was basically it. So, like I said, not a whole lot of a um, lot of changes. The biggest things here were getting my display running, getting my voltage set up in my motor parameters, and most importantly at the beginning, making sure my active braking is set up and I'm not using any of the, of the DC braking. And the most important part is getting the voltages and the maximum and minimum frequency set up so that I can control this guy here with uh, with my front panel control panel and not affect any of the operation. So that's it. Hope that was of some help to you. If you want to go this route, gives you some idea how to program the BFD. And thanks for watching.